Do you know how much you really need to save for a secure retirement? Join us as an expert dives deep into the essential retirement strategies from building a strong retirement corpus to navigating the unknowns in retirement. Get ready to uncover the rule of thumb for retirement savings and practical tips on achieving your goals even in uncertain times. Let's explore the path to a secure and stress-free retirement. Mr. Chandrakant, do we have any standard rules or guidelines you know, that people should take into consideration for effective retirement planning, like any rule of thumb that by this age you should have this much saved up? Like I read an article uh, and I also did a video actually on retirement planning uh, like many months ago where I read a rule of thumb where it says that 70% of your uh, pre-retirement income you should ideally get as a passive income in your retirement age. So I'm just trying to understand are there any rule of thumb uh, which people through which people can derive the right income that they should be generating in their retirement? People make all kinds of thumb rules and none of these things have any validity or uh, sanctity around it. It doesn't follow any particular pattern. Let us be very, very crystal clear about mm. it. A person could be earning a small salary in the beginning. Now, based on that, he makes predictions and he thinks that I'm going to retire at such and such an age and this is the money that I want. No, it doesn't work that way. You could be having a small salary, but by 45 years, you are well established. Your salary, that you derive or your business income that you derive at 45, 50, 55 years has no relevance to what you are earning today. It mm. happens in the lives of most people, whether it's a businessman, whether it's a salaried person, it's only the very unfortunate ones who will stagnate and who will not grow up in their careers, who will, uh, who will not have a great deal of salary. But for people who really work well, who upskill themselves, their life at 45 is way different from what they are at 25, 30 years of age. So mm. no thumb rules work. And when people plan for retirement, all the people who make thumb rules are the ones who have no idea about how the retirement is going to be done. Retirement planning is easy. At the same time, it is tough. It is tough because you don't know what happens during your retirement. Mm. See, for example, I'm at 63. I can recollect my younger days of 25, 30 years, how aggressive I was, what kind of a thinking I had and how I mellowed down over a period of time. Mm. And what has been my approach to money, life, you know, my colleagues, everything. Things have changed completely. Mm. And many of them laugh at this point of time thinking that, you know, how irrelevant it was to think at that point of time. It's just like you have know, going back to the analogy of cricket. So there is a new uh, uh, cricket player who has come in, who is batting very aggressively, trying to hit six out of every ball. And there could be the uh, talented uh, uh, Tendulkars or Virat Kohli's or any other great batsman who has uh, stood the test of time, will bat in a different way. He'll wait for the loose balls to come. He'll pick up the ball. He will wait for the perfect conditions to be there. That's the way he bats. So your retirement is as you think when you are working, when you are young, and actually when you retire is completely different. Mm -hmm. so you don't need to be putting any thumb rules uh, over here. Uh, what I would say is simply do two things. One, start early. However small the amount it could be, it's okay. You park that money in a wealth creating account. A wealth creating account is not a bank, it's a deposit, not a bond. It should be invested into the growing stock markets. Again, stock market is a dangerous term. If you put mm -hmm. it in Japan, it may not grow. If you put it in China, it may not grow. Places like India, there is a tremendous growth potential. US has potential. Your Australia, Singapore might have the growth potential. So it should be in a wealth creating uh, account. You can also make best use of the real estate many a times. So yeah. The problem of real estate is it requires a colossal amount of initial investment. So it's not for everyone to be there. Yeah. So you start early, be disciplined. I will say that in India, we call it as uh, every family has a Bhagwan Kavundi. That means there is a pot of money which is kept in the puja room where the families weekly, monthly, daily, however small the offerings are, they go and put it there, but they never dip their hand in. Yeah. So your retirement corpus should be like a Bhagwan Kavundi. So keep putting it make it grow and open it when your earnings have stopped it is 
going to become a big amount of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, that rule, really no thumb rules. Uh, one thumb rule you can say is, let's say I started with, uh, I'll just take the example of a rupee. I don't know which country your audience is. Uh, uh, we have diverse audience, I think. So it's yeah. fine. We can just take let's, let's, let's say somebody starts with a thousand rupees or a thousand dollars. Yeah. And don't change it uh, just because you don't have the money. You have to make sure that discipline should be there. Likewise, every time you get a jump, your salary increases, your mm. increment increase uh, comes through, you get certain bonuses. Whenever that comes, if this amount is, let's say, 5%, 2%, 10%, whatever that you have initially said, increase it accordingly. Mm. Increase it accordingly. Properly compartmentalize it. When I say compartmentalize it, do not mix it with your general pool of funds. You mm. put it in a plan or a mutual fund, index fund, whatever it is, it should be segregated away from the rest of the things and it should not be mixed with anything. If it is mixed, what happens is you lose track. Then the next opportunity to buy that car, plot of land, buying into a real estate or going on a vacation, you dip into it, all mm. the good work that you have done is gone. This is what is going to happen. So it should be compartmentalized. By the time you retire, an ideal thing is at the time of retirement, by 55, 60 years of age, how much money I need for my uh, maintenance of livelihood, be it uh, your day-to-day -day expenses or your annual payout for health insurance, car maintenance, property maintenance, whatever it is. Pull mm -hmm. that, okay, I need X amount of money uh, in a year. And the pool of money that you have should be at least 25 times of that. I would say at least, no fixed rule here. Higher the amount, the better. At the time of retirement, whatever is your lifestyle, whatever is the money you need annually, at least the corpus should be 25 times bigger than that. Hmm. It's also, I think, because of the rising average life expectancy. Also, we don't even know, like, until when we'll might, you know, live. People might think, okay, you know, I will retire at 60. I may die at 70, 75, which is the normal average expectancy. But some people outlive. That. Exactly. See, in retirement, nothing is known. How long you are going to live? I don't yeah. know. What is the good condition of your uh, health? I do not know. Where are you going to live? I do not know. Who mm -hmm. leaves this world first? Me or my spouse? The answer is do not know. Where mm -hmm. is your children are going to live? Will they take care of you or not? What is the interest rate cycle? What will be the inflation? Will markets give me? Or today we are telling that uh, China is not performing. Tomorrow, it could be the story of India or some other country. Mm -hmm. So you do not know. So you have to plan amidst all these unknowns. So the only way you can uh, take it up is keeping that money, move, keeping it in such a way that it grows, creates wealth. That means beating mm -hmm. inflation it creates wealth. That's the only option you have. Beating the inflation, I believe. Absolutely. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. No other yeah. people should yeah.